stoked for your talk. Uh, I've been looking for time series for a long time and to see how generative models can help us spread much more love. We need to give much more love to time series models. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm very excited to see you doing this. The floor is yours. So hello, I, I, I'm Masul. Uh, I'm CTO and co-founder on Nixlet. And uh, I will be uh, speaking about time GPT. So basically, uh, we do time series forecasting research and, and deployment. And we understand that uncertainty is an intrinsic aspect of, of reality. And time series research in particular is the systematic approach to unveil the, the future. So basically, uh, you can think about uh, sales and you want to, to predict those sales in order for, for, for you to take more um, informed uh, decision and make uh, some optimization in, in your in your pipeline. And also, uh, you can have, for example, uh, closing values of the Dow Jones and, and, and you want to predict uh, the behavior of those closing values. And we also understand that time series are the DNA of finance, commerce, energy, and technology. At the end of the day, companies uh, don't speak in in um, in figures. They they speak in 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 time series, right? And at Nixla, we created uh, the best time series open source ecosystem in the world. We have uh, several uh, Python libraries, from statistical models to to deep learning models. And those libraries are being used uh, uh, in a lot of companies around the world. Uh, for example, Zalando, Wafer, Walmart, Stripe, Nestle. And uh, we learn a lot from the open source ecosystem. And one, one particular insight uh, stood out. And it was that forecasting is, is extremely hard, confusing, and expensive because if you want to deploy uh, a forecasting pipeline, you have to hire a dedicated team of uh, machine learning engineers, machine learning um, forecasters. So um, it would be great if if there was a generative AI disruption in there. So we introduced uh, Time GPT one which is the first generative AI for, for temporal data the first foundation model for time series, and uh, there is an important distinction. TimeGPT is not a, a, an LLM because we didn't train uh, TimeGPT using uh, language uh, data. We, we, we used time series data. We used more than 100 billion of time series data points to train, to train TimeGPT. So it is a large time model instead of a large language model. Then the architecture of the of Time GPT, we basically pre-trained a, a transformer um, uh, using our own architecture of a, of a, of a deep learning deep learning model. We used a lot of different data sets from finance, electricity, web traffic, among among others, and we saw that we we had consistent accurate predictions. In fact, we did a lot of benchmarks considering different uh, frequencies of the data monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, and we compared time GPT against other models. For example, uh, the classical statistical ones, uh, Theta, uh, ETS, CES, Adida, IMAP, Crosstown Classic, but also machine learning models such as LightGPM. And uh, even we compared uh, time GPT against uh, deep learning models, for example, LSTM, DeepAR, uh, TFT, and, and NNHITS. And we can see that for the majority of the frequencies, time GPT outperforms those uh, those models. And it is important to say that this was uh, the performance of zero shot uh, inference. So we we didn't uh, train uh, time GPT in the test set that we are evaluating on. So time GPT's orders of magnitude faster and also is fine tunable in your enterprise data, and you can get even more accurate. Uh, forecast using the packaging capabilities of time GPT. And uh, you don't need to be a machine learning expert to, to use time GPT and it's, it is simple. Uh, so I will be coding in the next uh, part of the, of, the, of the talk, a live demo on how you can use time GPT using the Python, the Python SDK. So in this case, I will be coding using, using Bing, but you can use any editor that you, that you want. 
um, you can use TimeGPT through our uh, Mixla.ts Python SDK, but of course, TimeGPT, it is exposed as an API. So if you want to make uh, API requests using another uh, programming language, you can do that. And the code I will be writing today will be available at that uh, URL. And so let's start coding. So imagine that you have uh, electricity demand data, and of course you want to, to predict uh, the future demands uh, in order for you to optimize uh, the process. And this is really important because you need to know how, how much electricity you will be uh, demanded uh, in order for you to produce that, that, that electricity. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just import the necessary libraries and authenticate it to the, to the Python uh, SDK. So let me do that. So here I'm, I imported TimeGPT, so let me, let me authenticate. Uh, I already um, exposed the environment variable uh, TimeGPT token. And uh, I will be uh, loading the historical data of electricity demand. And then I will be plotting um, the series yes to figure. And let's run this, this code. Let's see if it if it works. So basically, in this in this in this moment, I'm just uh, downloading the the data and and uh, plotting them. And uh, after that, I will be showing how you can produce forecast using TimeGPT. So basically, we can see that we have four different markets uh, of four different regions in the world, and we need to to produce forecast for all uh, those uh, series. So. Uh, before TimeGPT, you need to you have to do a lot of things. You have to you have to do a hyperparameter selection, a model selection. And you have to do this this code in parallel. So it requires a lot of a lot of effort. Uh, but uh, um, thanks to TimeGPT, you can do that. You can create forecast using just one method um, of the TimeGPT class. So let me let me forecast the historic data frame. In this case, I will be uh, producing uh, 48 steps ahead of, of forecast, which corresponds to day to two days, and then I will be loading and um, and the forecast. So hopefully this will uh, run on time. So basically, here we are calling uh, our API, and we are calling the forecast endpoint. And uh, yeah, we are producing the forecast. And just like that, you can have forecast, which as you can see, uh, they are really good because the forecast uh, captures the trends and, and the seasonalities of the, of the data. And yeah, that's how, how, how TimeGPT works. And also you can use, you can add, for example, um, anomaly detection and just adding a couple of, of, of new parameters. And yeah, you can also detect anomalies using using TimeGPT, and this is really important because you want to know uh, the specific dates of of anomalous of anomalous dates just to make more informed decisions. And as you can see, uh, TimeGPT is able to capture uh, the anomalies really, 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 really. Good. And yeah, that's 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 uh, all from from my side. Thank you, thank you very much. Azul, with anomalies equal true, that blew me away. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. We should find you on Slack uh, and keep pinging you with, with questions. I'm sure folks will try to be de deploying this. I certainly will. Azul, thank you very much. Thank you.